A long time ago, I wrote about Taiwan's universal healthcare system. The feedback has been mostly kind, with the occasional smattering of mean things. To those who said mean things to me, I politely tell you to go pound sand. Upon finishing the article, I knew I wanted to write more about how the system works. In this video, I want to discuss how Taiwan's universal healthcare system works to manage the one massive problem plaguing the United States healthcare system, cost inflation. What causes healthcare cost inflation? No one has a complete answer. If you think you have the answer, then you're probably wrong. There are endless numbers of in-depth books and papers exploring many facets of U.S. healthcare and why it functions or dysfunctions the way it does. But this is a YouTube channel and I have just 10 minutes to talk to you about this. Thus, we must make general sweeping statements. And the general sweeping statement on healthcare cost inflation is that it is largely driven by the cost of developing new treatments, the rising needs of an aging population, and cost inefficiencies stemming from rising administrative costs. Countries with national healthcare systems have implemented a number of strategies to contain these forces of healthcare inflation. You can broadly classify them into two categories, micro and macro. The first category, micro, targets individuals, small policies that try to bend the cost curve by influencing a single person's behavior. An example of this would be like fiddling with a health insurance copay to stretch or reduce demand. Taiwan's system does do this. The second, macro, takes a different approach, a brutal, heavy-handed one dictated from the top down. In other words, a global budget. Some countries have implemented these on a limited level. Some countries have implemented these on a limited level. The United Kingdom, for example, with their physicians, and Germany for their drug prescription budgets. Fewer countries implement it on a system-wide level. Taiwan, having done it in 1995, was one of the last societies in the world to implement a truly national healthcare system. Being so late had serious disadvantages, but that lateness also allowed for the policy implementers to learn from their predecessors' mistakes. One thing before we continue, I want to make something clear to you. The Taiwan national healthcare insurance system is not perfect. The Taiwanese will be the first to tell you that. They complain about too fast services, or not having enough doctors, they complain about waiting, they complain about the cost of certain procedures and drugs. Things can be better, yes, that's true. And the rise of some private healthcare insurance services in Taiwan demonstrates that. But things can always be better in life. The NHI is on the whole popular, and the Taiwanese are grateful for its existence. How it manages to do that without blowing out its budgets is worth investigating. The first thing I want to talk about is the global budget. And then next is a centralized IT system. The NHI global budget. Taiwan's healthcare insurance, the NHI, is the entire system's single payer and exercise of monopsony power over it. The NHI's single globally capped budget is likely the single greatest factor in holding system-wide costs to a manageable level. It makes sense. How to keep things on a budget? Well, you set a budget from high above. But the key point with that, though, is that government bureaucrats do not set the budget by themselves. The process is performed in a collaborative manner with the various stakeholders to strike a balance between good service and cost efficiency. You start with a committee, of course. Each year, the NHI calls on some 35 member representatives from all over the Taiwanese healthcare system to gather and haggle over the global budget. Both the payers and providers are represented. Nearly half of the committee are drawn from the payers, employers, employees, and the government. The second largest chunk of the committee comes from providers, doctors, hospitals, pharmaceutical groups, dentists, etc. Academics fill out the rest. The academics are for negotiating disagreements and casting tie-breaking votes. The committee's budget planning is guided by a conceptual framework. Within each sector of Taiwan's healthcare system, there is a basic benefit budget and a special program budget. The first part, the basic benefit budget, is for the fundamental parts of the healthcare system. Cost inflation within that budget are classified as being quote unquote non negotiable or due to negotiable factors. Non-negotiable factors are things like population aging, and you can't do anything about that. Negotiable items 
take into account new cost-saving policies, the cost of new procedures, and target gains. They could possibly add to inflation or help reduce it. You don't know. The special program budget is for interesting projects type stuff. The goal there is to target initiatives to improve access and quality while balancing out costs. A global budget is nothing magical. The NHI runs its services just like how your average corporate analyst manages the budget of your in-house corporate print shop making flyers for your salespeople. The thing is that it is set collaboratively with collective input and done in good faith. IT Centralization Because of the NHI's central place within the Taiwanese healthcare system, it is able to dictate the specs of and deploy an effective IT system to monitor quality, reduce fraud, and minimize administrative costs. The IT system concept is simple, and simplicity is the goal. There are three components, the patient record, the physician profile, and the hospital practice profile. At the heart of the system is the NHI IC card system, which lets patients easily and conveniently get medical services with just a single card. It's a simple credit card size card with an embedded memory chip. The memory chip is capable of storing some kilobytes of data, about 36, and this data is mostly comprised of insurance information, data for processing insurance claims, drug allergies, and other public health data like vaccination records and organ donation notes. I have one myself, issued to me as part of my work, and it is exceedingly easy to use. At the clinic, you hand the card to the clerk who plugs it into a reader. Then you hand it to the doctor who plugs it into his own reader for the duration of your doctor visit. The card system was first implemented in November 1999 using paper cards with a six-digit code on the back. They were then upgraded in 2003 to their current form. The card reader and the accompanying internet connection are a required purchase by hospitals and clinics. These hospital and clinics are incentivized to do this because otherwise the NHI will not process their insurance claims and these clinics will not get paid. Hospitals and clinics like to get paid. The legendary founding CEO of the Taiwan Bureau of the National Health Insurance Agency, Ching Chuan Ye, says about the IT system, quote unquote, most importantly, you need a good health IT system at the very beginning to have the data capacity as a basis for policy making. Our every decision is based on quantitative evidence generated by our IT system. Taiwan invested heavily upfront on health IT, and we have reaped the benefits of our powerful IT system ever since. The savings our IT system has generated have paid for the setup costs of that system many times over. Cracking down on fraud and abuse. This IT system helped the NHI crack down on fraud. The lack of coordination between the systems meant that billing fraud and coding service abuse was rampant, leading to doctors overprescribing drugs and recommending too many clinic visits to defraud insurance plans and get money. At the same time, service was not better or cheaper due to confusion in processing multiple standards of medical records. With the unified IT system, the central authority, the NHIA, can exchange and merge all data generated by Taiwan's hospitals and clinics. This results in a universal, cradle-to-grave profile of each provider and patient, with diagnoses, tests, prescriptions, and treatments given and received. Statistical and epidemiological methods can be applied to catch outliers and audit them for instances of fraud. Physician committees are appointed to audit situations where possible fraud has occurred. When fraud is found, strict penalties are levied. This also means that you can catch people who are visiting their doctors too often for minor or iffy ailments. For those situations, the system can automatically, progressively, raise their copayment to share the burden of paying for the doctor's time. Low administrative costs. Keeping administrative costs low is a crucial factor in keeping the overall system affordable. The NHI itself is relatively cheap to run. Its administrative budget costs a mere 1.07% of overall expenditure. This percentage has actually declined in the 10 years from 2005 to 2014. For an organization that handles something as astoundingly complex as a healthcare system, that's a steal. This is because the system was built to be simple. For example, the NHI's imposition of a single uniform reporting and claims filing system 
means that hospitals and clinics are not hiring armies of assistants to churn through documents. It's all done with software, and doctors are compensated within 24 hours of the visit. It does generate some issues related to funding certain tasks that can be better used to run the system, but in general, the Taiwan NHI wants to be respectful of the taxpayer dollar. But can it work in the United States? Probably the biggest single reason why the Taiwanese have been able to keep cost inflation from overwhelming the Taiwan healthcare system, uh, it's just thus far required one premium increase over the past two decades, is that everyone wants it to work. There are a lot of voices and theories about why the United States has such a crazy healthcare system. I'm not going to dispute any of them. But to look through the lens of the Taiwan NHI though, you notice a few things. First, it would be hard to corral all the stakeholders in the U.S. healthcare system because the whole system is massive and decentralized. A lot of people will have to give things up to centralize the U.S. healthcare system and corral it under a global budget like the Taiwanese did. Taiwan's advantage is that they did it early enough. And the second thing I notice is that while the Taiwanese government implemented the system for political cover, it did not politicize the process itself. It passed the process over to a boring bureaucracy who went about it just like with their in-house corporate print shop. In the United States, healthcare is a hot button political issue. It's hard to build a thoughtful, comprehensive system with everyone screaming at each other. Not to say that the Taiwanese process does not have its own conflicts and clashes, it definitely does, but you can have constructive arguments between parties without vowing to lay political waste to the person you are arguing with. Escalation can help steamroll people and get what you want, but it also invites further escalation. And spiraling into infinite escalations might make the troll in you feel great, but in the end, it likely gets nothing actually done. All right, everyone, have a good evening. Um, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.